All right, so today I want to talk about the evolution of the NBA using persistent homology. So first off, what is persistent homology? Persistent homology is an algebraic method for measuring topological features of a data set. This can be done using various programming languages, and I'll get more into detail about what I was specifically looking for as I progress through the presentation, but I just wanted to define persistent homology so that everyone is on the same page. So the next couple of slides, I want to talk about the positional evolution of the NBA. So the player on the right is Hakeem Olajuwon, and he's 7 feet tall, and he's jumping off against Patrick Ewing, who is also 7 feet tall, and that's the 1993-94 Houston Rockets. And the picture on the bottom, the guy on the right is JaVale McGee, and he's 7 feet tall, but he's jumping off against James Harden, who is 6 feet 5 inches tall. Now I want to talk about the starting lineup of the 1993-94 Houston Rockets, and the reason I want to talk about this team is because their top two tallest players, Hakeem Olajuwon, who's 7 feet tall, I noticed Thorpe, who is 6 feet 9, and if we compare that to the 2019-2020 Houston Rockets starting lineup, their top two tallest players are Robert Covington, who is 6 feet 7, and P.J. Tucker, who is 6 feet 5. So obviously as the playing style has evolved over time, so has the role of each position on the court, right? So a position in a point guard in 2020 is not playing the same way as a point guard in, in 1990, and that could be said across all positions. So I thought... We could introduce new positions that are more defined based on player skill set instead of physical traits in order to better suit players. So the, the, these are the following uh, positions and those are the following statistics that they have to be good at in order to suit that position. So since we've been talking about the 1993-94 Houston Rockets, I thought why not start off with them. So the, so the Houston Rockets won the NBA championship in that season. and I want to talk about how we got to these two graphs. So I took the top nine, so I took the top nine players on each team that played the most minutes and normalized the player statistics of the player statistics data. I then graphed the normalized values of certain stats of the players from the Houston Rockets to see if there are any clusters between the players for certain statistics. So first, let's talk about total rebounds and blocks. So what does this tell me? We see a small, we see a cluster here between the guards, and we could see that in our cluster graph right here. So what is the cluster graph? So these values that we see in the graph on the left are then graphed on the right, and they're connected with values that are called filtration values or barcodes. And a filtration value is just figuring out the length it takes to connect two data points. If the filtration value is small between two values than two data points then that means they're more similar compared to two points that are connected by large filtration values like the like Hakeem Olajuwon and Odisdorf. So this what does this uh, graph tell me? It tells me that the team is defensively built around the front court mainly power forward and center since the cluster that's happening between the guards have negative values so it tells me that they did not impact the game that much on the defensive side and that Hakeem Olajuwon is the main rim protector right here. So let's move on to two-point percentage and free throw percentage. We can see that there are this, there's a small cluster right here between those three players and that tells me that those three players were the most efficient scores on the team and we could see that right here as they're connected by small filtration values, relatively small filtration values. Let's go to field goal percentage and three point percentage now. This is the main graph I want to talk about. As we could see that there's no clustering, there's just points that are close to each other, like right here and right here, but there were no significant clustering. And this makes sense because the, the three point revolution did not start in 1993, 1994 as teams were mainly built around the center and that there, and that there weren't any significant three point shooters. So personal fouls and total rebounds, we can see that there's a cluster around the guards right there. But again, since they were negative, this verifies that the uh, defense was revolving around the center and the power forward. And with no three-point game, everyone was just drawing, driving into the lane and was just playing through the center. So obviously, it makes sense that the center and the power forward picked up the most fouls. So next is steals and blocks. And we can see that there's a cluster around the guards. But again, like I said before in the previous two defensive graphs, you can see the cluster also right here. So we can see that they're connected by relatively small filtration values. But since they're both negative, since both their values are negative, uh, they didn't affect the game that much. And 
the game was mainly still uh, revolving around the center in a defensive in a defensive sense. So Hakeem Olajuwon was mainly the lockdown defender. So if we look at the summary of that season, we could see offensively that the game plan was built around the front court and players didn't have to be efficient scores and not a lot of three point shooting as well. And the game was more inside out, meaning that the guards just dumped everything into the center and let the center score most of the time. Defensively, we could see that it also mainly starts with the front court and that guards weren't as relied on to def uh, heavily defend as the center did most of the dirty work. So let's move on to 2005-2006 and the champions of that season were the Miami Heat. And let's do the same thing as we did before. So if we look at total rebounds and blocks, we can see a small cluster on the guards. And this is this is important because it shows that the guards are more relied have uh more relied to heavily defend, but and contribute more defensively, even though the centers are still doing most of the defensive work. And you can see that right here with Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning right here. So two point percentage and free throw percentage, we could see a small cluster here with the efficient scores showing an increase in playing uh, a more efficient type of basketball right here. We could see that right there in the cluster graph. So field goal percentage and three point percentage, we could see a cluster right here. And we could see that players are now being more open to the three-point game and are making a lot of three, even though their field goal percentage is going down a little bit. We could see that players are more open to taking more three-point shots. And this is kind of the beginning of the three-point revolution. So personal fouls and total rebounds. We could see that there are three points near three players. We could call that a small cluster right here, even though their filtration values are relatively small compared to the rest of the team. And uh, with guards more take with guards taking more responsibility on defense, as we saw in the previous graph, graph more guards uh, I think can be called enforcers in this sense. And this is a change from the 1993-94 season. So now let's go to the steals and blocks. We can see a small clustering, but nothing really significant right there. And it shows that it that there's now a team identity placed on defense, and that the game was now becoming more offensively driven, as there weren't that many lockdown defenders. We can see that cluster right there so now the summary of that season we could see that offensively it's more driven towards guards now instead of the front court as before you can see that players are more open to the idea of taking more three-point shots and there are more efficient scores within guards and defensively you can see that a team identity on defense compared to building defense around the front front court as we saw in the 1993-94 season and guards are more responsible on defense with more guards being rim protectors and enforcers so now let's fast forward to recent times and let's look at the 2017-2018 Golden State Warriors who won the NBA championship that season as well. So total rebounds and blocks, uh, I don't see any clustering and this shows that the game is more offensively driven with no rim protectors on that team. Uh, two point percentage and free throw percentage, I see a small cluster right here but nothing significant. Um, since the Warriors are primarily a three-point shooting team with the majority of scoring going through Kevin Durant, uh, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson. So obviously we're not going to see anything significant on the two-point front. And in the field goal percentage, field goal percentage and three-point percentage, we see a cluster around the three most important players that I said before. And most of the offense went through three-point shooters and the three-point revolution is in full effect, as I said before. Personal fouls and total rebounds. I don't see any clusters and no enforcers because teams are more focused on the offensive side of the ball and the same thing for the steals and blocks graph. I don't see any clusters. So the summary of that season offensively, the game plan is focused on three-point shooting. Players that are good three-point shooters carry most of the offensive load and the league is now offensively driven. And defensively, uh, it's not as stressed as much as teams are more focused on outscoring opponents instead of limiting. And teams just need a couple good defenders, but the whole team is not built around one defensive ident identity or scheme. So some extensions that you could do with this, you could uh, figure out how championship teams are built, what characteristics championship teams have, and uh, try to build a team from there. And you could also create new positions based on the plethora of NBA stats that are available. These are just a small number of positions that I created, but you could go a lot more and you could tailor players to positions based on skill sets and not physical traits, which is, uh, which is a new idea. And so this is my work side. Thank you for uh, listening to my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it.